again, all of the donations today going directly to patient care. Yeah, Stephanie, you and I have been meeting some of the families and checking out the facility. I have learned so much. I, my son was a patient here a couple of years ago, so it's really nice to be able to help to give back. But we always have to do the tote, right, Stephanie? So Absolutely. let's start off the show. We're going to start off the show so far with our morning crew uh, and with the help of everyone out there. We have raised $16,612. Let's talk specifically about some of the things that you guys do. I, I know you've got a list. You've got some great things coming up. Can we start with the playroom? Absolutely. <laughs> One of my absolutely favorite places. The playroom is a getaway place for kids. That's what kids do every day. Just like adults, we work while kids play. And so that's a special place where kids kids can go to and their sisters and parents and it is a protective place it's a off, off limits to medical procedures so they don't have to look over their back wondering is something going to happen to me you may not think about it when a child enters the hospital though for weeks maybe even months sometimes years school does not go away in fact the routine of going to class can actually help these children with their treatments and that's where the one darn cool school comes into the picture Tens of thousands of children come through Phoenix Children's Hospital every year, and a good number of those require extensive stays that take them out of their class and out of their homes. So in order to keep a little bit of normalcy in their life and really allow them to feel like the kids at home, therein lies one darn cool school and one darn cool teacher, Michael Borum. <laughs> Thanks for letting us into the classroom today. Well, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. When we talk about um, the mission of One Darn Cool School, um, we're talking about a, a lot of different things, are we not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're talking about the mission of One Darn Cool School is really to service our kids in every capacity, academically, um, re-entry-wise. Also, whatever the condition is of our kids, to meet them where they are and make sure they get the services they need while they're here at PCA school-wise. Initially, when we think about if we're sick or, or there's something wrong with us, we think, well, we don't want to go to work or much less think about it. Mm -hmm. But you say in the mind of a child, it's just a little bit different, and they actually desire. All right. For the average adult, when you are uh, medically in a place of displacement, you want that time to try and recover and to relax. But for our kids, uh, recovery is enhanced by their, their social component, by their academic component, by getting out of their rooms or doing work in their rooms by keeping them um, active academically or mentally, whatever it takes for them to, to continue to fight and to continue to provide that kind of energy, then it, it assists them. So this type of program helps our kids while they're here to actually recover. Once families are here, it can be pretty um, disconcerting to families because they may not know how long they're going to be here. And so after they're here for a little while, it settles in that, oh boy, you know, the other part of my world, uh, my child's world is school. And so if a child is here for, say, six months or eight months, that's, that's huge. And without this school being here, that child may return to school and have to be retained. What, what are we working on here? Well, I'm done with all the books. What is this? Zebra. And this? Rhinos. I think you've got the beginnings of a very fantastic book here. Thank you. We should maybe get it published. Well, even as we were in, in school today, um, we were able to see just a couple different types of students as well. One that was here because um, she has uh, some tumors mm -hmm. in her brain, and so she was definitely able to do a lot of the work, mm -hmm. but then she had, you know, some limitations as well, and so you have to address those. Definitely. So our school program is not like a typical school program. We meet our kids where they are, and any effort that they can bring to the classroom, we reward them for that, and we applaud them for it. It's not easy to get up and go to school every day for any Kid, let alone to come when you're having to deal with a medical issue and, and trying to contend for your health. So. And you even created incentive for them to we go did. to school. Yes, we did. We have, a, we have school money for our kids when they come in, and anything that they do, we pay them. Any work that comes from their home school, they're paid even more for because we want them staying uh, caught up with their school program. So we pay them money, and they can buy toys and video games, backpacks, school supplies, things like that when they're returning. What kind of motivates you and drives you every day when you see, uh, quite frankly, 
children sometimes that are that are struggling. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say is love. All of our kids, all of our teachers love the kids we work with. When they come to the hospital, they become our own, and we work with them as if they're the, they're our own children. So, I mean, and and there's there's such a high level of reward for working with a student who is recovering from something medically, and they bring so much joy into our lives. It's, it's it's really not work at all. We're just here facilitating learning, and we get so much out of being with the kids and and listening to their stories and seeing them recover and and just assisting in any way is 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 nothing but enjoyable here at PCH. Well, you may not know this, but Phoenix Children's Hospital is one of only a few hospitals in the country that have employees as teachers in, the own, in their own facility. They work in that school Monday through Friday, and they do that year-round with a big, huge heart. There are many centers of excellence here at Phoenix Children's Hospital. I am here with Dr. Carbio, and she is the Neuro NICU Medical Director here at Phoenix Children's Hospital. You're doing some amazing things, and I think it's fair to say that you're bringing a lot of great things here to the hospital that have been done in other places across the country, but now you're bringing it here to, to our residents. Correct. The Neuro NICU is a virtual um, subspecialty unit within the intensive care nursery where we treat all babies with neurological deficits in a very aggressive bedside management way. We brought this, um, we did a site visit to UCSF, which is the first neuro NICU. They officially opened uh, summer of 07, and we officially opened um, November of 09. And in between that time, we had started using hypothermia therapy, which is one of the things we do within this neuro NICU. So the neuro NICU effect, uh, takes care of all infants affected neurologically, not only babies who require a cooling therapy. And the babies who require cooling therapy are those that end up um, having a lack of oxygen just before delivery or at delivery. And it helps the brain um, calm down and not continue to produce toxic chemicals within the brain that continue to damage other neurons in the brain. The cooling process stops that. So the initial injury does not continue to progress. And the amazing thing that we've been able to do with this technology is that in babies with a moderate injury, in the past, about 30% would develop cerebral palsy down the road, and we have reduced that to 6% with our therapy. How long does the baby have to be on the, on the cooling therapy? 72 hours okay. is the standard time, and we usually need to um, have these little ones with us by six hours of age to start the process. That's sort of the magic number is that It is the magic hour number, mark. correct. But again, I just want to emphasize that as a center of excellence and as a neuro NICU, we don't only do cooling. We don't only treat babies who have had this issue at the time of delivery. We have take care of babies who um, we don't know why they are having seizures, babies with other CNS anomalies, neuromuscular issues, and so we are able to really make a difference in um, appropriate uh, diagnoses and very aggressive and innovative treatments, which is remarkable. We are a handful of neuro NICUs in the country, um, the only one in this southwest region. Um, and there's very f other few around the country. So we are really blessed to have this here at Phoenix for our community. Experienced a little bit of challenges with the baby at the, at the time of birth. And that really kind of took us from a, an emotional high, you know, as we celebrated, you know, our first child to a real immediate change. Leo was uh, unfortunately not breathing for about two minutes. We had to spend about three to five minutes on top of that, um, helping her trying to breathe and getting her heart going. So what it, what it was going to require was for baby Leah to be able to actually cool down her body. Uh, this would enable her to get the opportunity to uh, take a little bit of a slower uh, um, growing process. As they slow her down, she's going to be able to recuperate slowly, but hopefully make a, a huge turnaround. The staff here have been fantastic. They answer all the questions that we have. Um, so friendly. You can tell that they just they love what they doing. They do, and they care about the babies and care about little Leah. It's always been something that when people say you're at Phoenix Children's Hospital, um, they say you're at one of the best places you can be. So it's, it's definitely awesome to know that this is one of very few facilities around the country that's offering our child the opportunity to uh, beat some of those uh, complications that could come later in life. All right, well, this is Riley. 
This is not Gonzo's baby. I need to uh, make that very yeah. clear, but he has three beautiful children. And uh, we wanted to tell you that Riley, she actually received the cool cap therapy when she was born in December. And now she is a healthy, according to Gonzo, she has a good grip. Yes, yeah, she's got a great grip. <laughs> She is a healthy four-month-old, and it's all because of Phoenix Children's Hospital. They have done so many amazing things, and your donation can help. So we would like you to call right now. Call the number at 602-933-4567. Again, we are going to be here till 11 o'clock tonight. Gonzo's going to be holding babies all day long.